What to do, YouTube? This is Acid Roots. I'm going to review Cobra Starship's third album. This album came out in the summer of 2009, and it's called Hot Mess. Basically, this was Cobra Starship hit a stride in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Their other album that was really good was Nightshades. Not to say that their other albums weren't good, also, but they had two big albums. Hot Mess was a big album, and Nightshades from 2011 were both big albums. Nightshades had You Make Me Feel, which was a top 10 hit. And this album has Good Girls Go Bad. So basically, the thing about Cobra Starship, from what I know, they kind of have like some real kind of LMFAO and Breathe Carolina type music and just a good minor taste of EDM, but definitely a lot of electronic dance pop stuff like 303, that type stuff. That's pretty brilliant. And I definitely look at the concept behind this, just the fact that they were doing this. There wasn't an overabundance of music like this back in... 2009 2010 or so i definitely kind of feel like the concept between like kesha and 303 and some in some cases katy perry and pitbull and lmfao and some of those folks who were kind of cresting around that time it just created like a kind of more dance club type sound that was just pretty oriented i was definitely glad for that this is different from songs that, you know, like the Britney Spears and the Christina Aguilera type dance songs of like the early and mid 2000s and such. And I definitely kind of feel like this is an interesting craft just because I feel like this is an interesting craft because the, the field for dance club music was kind of open around that time. This is definitely something that helped lay the train tracks as far as trying to get uh, dance club music, not just being Euro pop and kind of girl, you know, like girl pop star type stuff where this is kind of a little bit more where there's going to be drinks and this the amalgamation of pop music kind of fleshing out beyond just like the one or two dance club singles and then switching to like more romanticized music that pop usually does that's kind of the concept this is pretty much full-blown weekend and party album and such and i treat it as that just because it's a pretty quality project it's great for going out and kind of like any sort of census as far as that would kind of go as long as you have a vehicle or something or just kind of within the context of having an active nightlife it kind of works pretty damn well so it's just kind of the concept going to karaoke bars dance bars raves in some cases vanilla nightclubs vanilla dance clubs there's plenty of stuff to kind of flesh out and be able to sit there and do so it's just kind of got a good taste of that uh so we'll go ahead and <clears throat> We'll go ahead and get into the singles. There were two of them. The first single is Good Girls Go Bad, and this was quite a large hit. This is definitely one that was very similar to Tayo Cruz and LMFAO back in 2009. This definitely reminds me of like Dynamite and some of those EDM type songs that were pretty, some of those dance club songs that were pretty EDM heavy and such like that. And I just would have to say Good Girls Bad is a good, very good entry kind of very good entry dance club bop from like the late 2000s, early 2010s. This is definitely one that was probably a very popular hit throughout the early 2010s and should bring you back to 2009, 2010, 2011, some of those type years. Definitely one of the central ones. It's pretty interesting that this came out of the 2000s just because it just feels like a song that's only about 8, 9, 10 years old, but it's actually 14. That just kind of happens to be the concept, but it is a pretty quality hit and I do like it. It has a great hook on there. I like the extra chick who's on the song. She contributes to the song well. Light Leighton or Leighton Meester. So I would have to say, uh, this kind of, I mean, this is kind of the typical stuff like the Kesha songs, the Tayo Cruz songs, the LMFAO songs that I talked about. So this is kind of just one of those entry level ones. I think ultimately I like You Make Me Feel a little bit better, but they also, of course, had two more years to flesh out their craft on the on the nightshades albums that's kind of but this is definitely quality because i don't know how much viva la cobra from 2007 wound up doing compared to the hits on this album but this definitely was a top 10 hit and this was basically this song is tied with you make me feel as cobra starship's largest songs so i should say something it was just a very popular hit and continues to be but it's just kind of i do feel like nightshades had some better stuff but this is still I think you you can't go wrong with this song. I just would have to say it's, I, it deserved to hit. It deserved to hit number seven on the Billboard 100. So that's a nice one. Second single is Hot Mess, and I was actually surprised that this did not chart a lot higher. I would have figured that this would have at least been like a top 30 single or something like that, but it barely made like it. It was in the it was 61 on the Billboard 100, so it was like a top 65 single. 
and then that kind of wrapped up the promotion for the project. But it's really too bad just because this song is another electronic. This one doesn't slow the tempo. This is another kind of electro club bop just right off the bat. Maybe not quite as hooky and quite as chart ready as Good Girls Go Bad, but it definitely is a nice one because they didn't slow the tempo. They didn't try something else. They didn't switch up the the temp they didn't switch up the frame and have this something completely different like r and b albums do so this keeps the energy and the hook is pretty good i i mean i can see i mean really i felt like I felt like this is kind of just a standard kind of, I felt like Hot Mess is like a standard night out on the weekend type feel. So I just felt like this is pretty interchangeable with like a good weekend type playlist for a CD or a burn CD or something like that. It just works extremely well for that. It's just a perfect crafted little song. If you're just looking for something that may not be this album, but you still want to have this song on there, it's a pr great playlist song and it just kind of, fleshes out the weekend even more. I'm really surprised this song didn't do better. Like I said, it probably should have cracked the top 40, top 30, something like that. I don't know why it didn't. It's in the same vein. It's got the same about pace, a little bit, maybe a little bit crunchier, a little bit more electronic than Good Girls Go Bad, but they're still both two great electro pop dance club type songs. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about, like I'm reviewing the deluxe edition, which has a 12th song on here. So the standard edition has 11 songs, but there's a 12th song that is on the deluxe edition in addition to two songs, two remixes of Good Girls Go Bad, which I'm not going to review. But the deluxe edition has the extra song, I May Be Rude, But I'm the Truth. So I'm going to go ahead and list the seven songs out of 12 that I recommend. So those songs would be Good Girls Go Bad, Hot Mess, Nice Guys Finish Last, Living in the Sky with Diamonds, You're Not In on the Joke, Wet Hot American Summer, and I May Be Rude But I'm the Truth. So a lot of these, they talk about some of these hits on here, I feel like uh, Living in the Sky with I feel like Living in the Sky with Diamonds and Nice Guys Finish Last are both some really quality dance club type songs, very similar to Hot Mess, the title track. I especially feel like Living in the Sky with Diamonds, this one was kind of a promo single. This one's just a nice electronic type feel towards it. It's got a nice energy and a pretty solid hook also. I mean, I could see it not charting, but it's just a quality dance club cut that would be pretty crafted just to hear in a dance club if they weren't just playing like the hit singles. I do think dance clubs should start doing that more, just being able to play like songs that are not the lead single or the second single that has to hit number one or number two or something like that. So I kind of feel like this would be some stock music, Living in the Sky with Diamonds, and then Nice Guys Finish Last are both some great ones. You're not in on the joke. You're Not In On The Joke is like a very vanilla kind of dance club song. I do like the concept of a vanilla dance club. This one just sounds like being at the dance club often more than two or three times a week. This is just kind of one that's kind of a trade type song that I just would feel like is factory made and this is good to have. It's just a quality album cut, not a single, but just good that Cobra Starship can flesh out these kind of songs. And then I also feel like uh, Wet Hot American Summer is a good example of like a vanilla nightclub type song. This one's just kind of... Wet Hot American Summer was another song that was kind of a promotional single. This one along with Living in the Sky with Diamonds. This one's a pretty stock kind of vanilla dance club type song. I mean, there's a lot of vanilla songs on here, but I like the concept of it just because, you know, vanilla dance club songs are necessary just because for the most part, I do feel like dance clubs kind of get tiresome when they're just playing the songs that you've heard 50, 100 times. So it just kind of happens to be the thing. This is definitely an encouraging one. And the fact that Wet Hot American Summer was a promotional single is definitely a good reason to still be able to pick up some spins and kind of play it. This one just really feels crafted. This one is pretty chart ready. This is probably the closest one apart from Good Girls Go Bad, the lead single that would probably work for me in terms of like the dance club. But I, I feel like Hot Mess is kind of like that, but that one's not quite as dance. That one's more of like rave ready than Wet Hot American Summer. But Wet Hot American Summer is definitely a dance club one, stock vanilla one. And then the the 12th song, I May Be Rude, But I'm the Truth, is just another kind of night venue type song that works pretty damn well. And it just happens to be, this one has like pretty good glossy production on there. It's just a very glitzy song, and I would have to say it works it works just getting up the the stock list of some of these songs that just happen to be really a fun rave night especially at the dance club or some sort of night venue where there's dancing that's kind of the concept so 
I'm going to give this album me like in seven songs out of 12. I'm going to give this album like a seven out of 10. I feel like that's pretty solid just to give it that. I would give it a 6.75, but I feel like just because of the quality of these and how factored they are, just the fact that over half the album, especially on the deluxe edition, because really I would have to say I wound up liking six out of 11 on here. So you would think that that would kind of be something, but I would give it a seven just because of the quality of these and just the impact of what kind of happens and the fact that all of the singles, including the two promotional singles, were pretty good. So I definitely feel like that value has a lot of stock towards it. And it just happens to be a real jolt of energy in terms of what goes on. So it's a seven out of 10. I would almost give it a 6.75, but I'm just going to kind of be a little bit optimistic and give it a 7. So um, some of the songs I didn't enjoy, like I kind of felt like Fold Your Hands Child was being a little bit preachy. I didn't like the kind of rock-oriented sound of Pete Wentz is the only reason we're famous. I mean, I think that one, I might have almost liked that song, but I kind of would have liked it to be more electronic. I mean, it was kind of like a blend of half a rock song and half electronic in the second verse, but I don't know. I just was not vibing enough with the song to really appreciate it. I mean, maybe that's a song that could be an almost song that would bolster the, the album even Maybe that's a song that could be an almost song that would bolster the album even more. But at this point, I just wasn't vibing with it. I could almost say that that's an almost song. But, you know, it's just kind of maybe that would be like the secret eighth song or something. But that's kind of the things that would warrant me more giving it a seven. But I also didn't like the scene is dead. I really like the kind of low key kind of trance type I really like the low-key kind of trance-type production on the first verse in The Scene is Dead, Long Live the Scene, but they switched it up again. They kind of do this sometimes. They switch up the, the verse like texture of it, and it just kind of messes with some of the energy. And sometimes, I mean, I know it's supposed to kind of like, I know it's supposed to ramp up the energy and kind of give it more of a spark, but it kind of, when they have two clashing styles that don't mix as well, it kind of doesn't do that as well. I mean, I think I can mess with the Pete Wentz one, but this one's kind of different. I really didn't like the beat on The World Will Never Do with B.O.B. I like the fact that they got a verse from B.O.B. before he really blew up like that in early 2010, but this was not a good song to really showcase him, and it just didn't work. I, I really felt like this probably had the worst beat on the whole album. And Move Like You Gonna Die. And Move Like You Gonna Die is another rock-based song that I kind of feel like they had the real dance club and electro-pop type sound really fleshed out. But for some reason, I wasn't finding the riffs as interesting when they tried to do the rock-type moments. I mean, they either wound up being an almost song for me or this not even hitting the net for me at all. So that kind of happened to be the situation. This I didn't like that. And there were like... Kind of, that's just kind of the concept of how some of that went. There's some bad produced ones that, I mean, this album is pretty stock full of some pretty dance club and oriented night venue type stuff, but sometimes they do kind of switch up the production and it kind of leaves you hungry and taste, leaves you savoring a taste that they just don't mess with and would have made the song better. But I, I could at least say that maybe the Pete Wentz song would be something I could grow to like. But other than that, I just feel like most of these are just kind of, they just downplayed the project some. So that's why it's a seven. It's just a solid seven. In terms of social score, I will give it an eight and a half just because this album is chock full of dance ready cuts. It's just a perfect little dance club. It's just chock full of dance club cuts. It's just a perfect little dance club album got plenty of weekend moments it's pretty much an attachment to your nightlife scene i just would have to say this is definitely an accompaniment that needs to be brought along especially putting burnt cd playlists and stuff like that spotify playlists just to really ramp it up and amplify that type sound even more so i just would have to say that's kind of the concept there so in terms of the future like uh cobra starship has kind of vanished they have seemingly retired I'm not quite as sure as to what's going to happen there, but I do like the concept of two of these albums being pretty sure shot. Like I said, this is a pretty quality project, and this wins a lot of originality points just because of the power in the singles and just the fact that it's just a jolt of refreshing energy that just was unlike things that were kind of going on around at the time. So it definitely has original, definitely has originality points and just has the wow factor down pretty well. So that's some quality stuff.